this is meteorologist Mark Mulner with your 2018 hurricane outlook. After last season's 2017 being such a blockbuster year with so many category fives, what will this year hold? Take a look at the names. These are the names from A all the way down here through the alphabet. So we got a whole new list of names here for this season. And I'm gonna start you off with my predictions I'm looking at about 25% above the average for pretty much every level here. Take a look at name storms about 16, nine around nine, nine and a half, ten of those could become hurricanes, and right around four to five major hurricanes here. So last season was very unprecedented that we saw so many major hurricanes, so many category fives that hit very similar areas throughout the season, and this season will mimic a little bit, especially the first two thirds of the season, because the pattern will be slightly the same for the most part. Let's get right into the Pacific waters here. We do have some cooling, a little bit of some of the patterns here in the Eastern Pacific. And nonetheless, we're looking at some of those neutralized watch sea surface temperatures here across the eastern Pacific. So we're kind of getting rid of La Nina and we're kind of warming it. So we're taking those cooler temperatures from the water and we're warming it up towards right around no sea surface temperature anomalies. Now along the Mexican coast out through Hawaii here we do have some warmer temperatures but nevertheless where it really matters is right off the coast of central South America here right along just south of the map here on the equator. And that's where we're seeing some neutralization going on. So that, some of the forecast models take El Nino into portions of mid to late September through October, November. That being said, even if El Nino were to really start ramping up by that time, which I'm kind of in doubt at this point because we've seen this pattern again and again, we've been trying to expect El Nino, which I think it will surface sometime towards the winter time, but even if it were to surface towards middle of fall, it would take a while for this to really get into the whole atmospheric global pattern. So needless to say, we're looking at a very neutral phase here. Now, many of you would probably be saying, okay, we're going to be neutral for the most part. Why aren't we going to see more of a normal type of atmosphere for hurricanes rather than in above normal. Well, that being said here across the Atlantic Basin, take a look at the temperature, sea surface temperatures. For the most part, we do have some cooler areas here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, portions of the central and eastern Atlantic here. But take a look at most of the areas here reporting from the Cape Verdes up through the Caribbean and into the, especially the Western Gulf, which was hit hard last year as well, off the Bahamas and the Gulf Stream here of the Eastern United States. We're looking well above normal. So this is kind of setting the stage here for a lot of heat content for these storms to feed off of. And being that El Nino, even if it were to develop later on in the season, it would, its effects would be minimal to start out we wouldn't see a lot of wind shear, especially the first two thirds of the season. So we won't see a prevalent pattern to promote wind shear, just like last year when we saw a very conducive environment. And I'll show you those pattern areas that I'm gonna be looking at here uh, that will be very similar to last year's where major hurricanes did develop. So taking a look at the Atlantic Basin here, this is what's been catching my eye to say the least, the above normal sea surface temperature, temperature anomalies by as much as a half a degree to a degree Celsius, which is fairly significant when you take in the whole concept and the scheme of things here across the Atlantic Basin. So that being said, this is gonna start off to a very blockbuster season. And let's take a look at some popular paths this hurricane season that I will be looking at. Take a look at this, Western Gulf, Central, Caribbean here. Eastern Gulf, we do have that sea surface temperature, temperature anomaly. I think that'll start to even out as the temperatures start to warm up. But nevertheless, we will see a very active season now. Many of you across the northern uh, Leeward Islands here in the Windward Islands, you saw category five, in category 5 storms as well as into Puerto Rico. This year, unfortunately, we're looking at a very active pattern here between the Cape Verdes and the Lesser Antilles in Puerto Rico here. So this is not very good news and the pattern does kind of represent 
a very similar pattern to last year and we do have those high temperature content waters to work with here starting off early in the season. So that's not very good news for you out here in the islands in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean islands to say the least. Bahamas, you were hit hard last year. Florida, Texas, these are areas that could see it again this year. And we'll have to watch the whole East Coast because there'll be a lot of recurvature going on as we see a more active northern branch jet stream here. So that being said, that's what we're looking at for this season as far as storm tracks and major hurricanes. I will ask you to stay tuned this hurricane season for any further updates. And don't forget to like me on Facebook at MediaMark, subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com, it's Twitter at WX Northeastern, and Google Plus at MediaMark. That'll do it for this 2018 edition. Weather outlook for tropical storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes.